Guys, draft day came and went, and what an amazing long four hours it took. Uh, we had some surprise draft picks. We had some draft picks that really didn't surprise us. We knew what was going to happen. But, man, what what happiness the draft is with so much excitement, so much Oh, just so much stuff going on. My heart's still pumping right now. But, I've, of course, as always, I am Michael Terraza, joined by my hosts, Destin Adams, Rashad McGinnis. Guys, man, what an amazing day one of the draft. Yeah, I mean, it couldn't have gone better um, for Colts fans. I mean, we're going to touch a little bit more on it. But, I mean, I think Quiddy Pay was top of just about every Colts fan's board for that 21 pick. We just didn't think he'd be there. I'm super excited for that, but man, just overall, the draft being here, questions finally being answered, it's just been, oh man, so excited, but also, I mean, Michael was so excited, he forgot to even mention the show's name, but guys, welcome back to the Blue Stable, um, the official Colts podcast of fan sided we're just so excited to be able to bring you guys this content, and like he said, my name's Destin Adams, and Rashad McGinnis, man, like, what's up? Man, I'm not going to hold it against Michael. I think we're all running on fumes at this point. It's been a long day, but, man, like you say, the draft, it's, it's just all that hard work that I know all of us been watching film and studying different players, man. Like, but Dustin just put out uh, his big board. of How many players did you have? 250? I had, I had my top 200 listed on the big board. I scouted a total of 296 people this year. 296 people. Like you say, man, hard work. All of us arguing back and forth over certain players, people we liked. And, and here it all, you know, comes to one place, comes to one day. And I couldn't be more ecstatic with how the first round went. A lot of surprises that we're going to get into later and a lot of things that we need to talk about because I got a couple of bones to pick with you guys. Hey, trust me, just because the draft is here now does not mean the arguing stops because I <laughs> promise, Destin, I got some smoke for you, buddy. All right? Now, I need to get this out the way. The last month, I have been saying guys can fall. Guys can be available. Oh, oh no, that's just not – hold on. That's just not how things work. Uh, you know, if you're so talented, you can't go, oh, Zayvon Collins is a reach. Uh, Cardarius Tony's the best. Uh, Terrence Marshall, he's just uh, – no, he's just so bland. Um, my rankings, you know, I have him as my number seven. Well, guess what? Zayvon Collins went at number 16. He's going to be in Arizona. They are going to shine. All right. They're not going to shine against Indianapolis. We know that. But him, Isaiah Simmons, Chandler Jones. I was about to say Chandler Parsons. J.J. Watt, Buddha Baker. It's lit in Arizona. It's lit. And then... I told you, guys can draft. Y'all wanted to laugh at me for saying CD fell. But guess who all fell? Joke is not even drafted yet. I told you, but your head hard. I tried <laughs> to tell you, Destin. I tried to. I tried to take you to school. I tried to put the notes in <sighs> front of you so that way on test day, you can get an A. But your head hard. I told you your day was coming. I told you. Now, Rashad, do you think it's funny that this man brought up how we were so high on Kadarius Tony and how he, he was too high on Terrence Marshall and Terrence Marshall fell out around one and Tony went and picked 20? <laughs> he was he dead wrong. He was like, dead he, wrong about Tony. He's just going he's he's to roll credit. over that, though. He's just going to roll whoa, over whoa, it talking whoa. about it. But he hey, we're going to get in. Tony was the perfect fit for the Giants. We're gonna, and we're going to get into every single pick and we're going to let. Michael go on a little victory lap on Zayvon Collins when we get there. And I'm sure others of us will have uh, other things to say about Zayvon Collins going to the Cardinals. But what, what basically what we're going to do, like we were recording this moments after the draft ended. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, I mean, Michael is exhausted. Dude's tired, ready for bed. He has a big boy adult job to go to in the morning. <laughs> uh, and he's out here producing content instead. But hey, we're just going to go through. We're going to do eight at a time. We're going to talk about our favorite pick of that eight and our least favorite pick of that eight. 
and we're going to keep on rolling. When we get to the set where 21 and the Colts are, we're going to wait till after all 32 to give our thoughts on Quiddy Pay. Um, spoiler alert, we're all stoked to have Quiddy Pay. But we're going to touch on that a little bit more in depth after we get to there. So we're just going to start it out. We're going to go through the first eight. So going number one, this wasn't a surprise. Um, the Jacksonville Jaguars took quarterback out of Clemson, Trevor Lawrence. Um, going second, um, the New York Jets. This one shouldn't have been a surprise. Um, Michael may have been surprised. Um, and it was Zach Wilson out of BYU quarterback. And going third to the 49ers, where a lot of people thought the draft really started. A lot of questions on who was going to go here. And Trey Lance, quarterback out of North Dakota State, ends up being the selection. Um, four, the Atlanta Falcons take Kyle Pitts, tied in Florida. Five, the Cincinnati Bengals take Jamar Chase, receiver LSU. At six, the Miami Dolphins take Jalen Waddell, receiver. At seven, the Detroit Lions take Penny Sewell, tackle, Oregon. And at eight, the first defensive player of the draft, the Carolina Panthers take corner out of South Carolina, J.C. Horn. So, Michael, let's start with you. Who was your favorite pick of that eight, and who was your least favorite? Oh, man. Uh, my least favorite, I don't – I don't know if I have a least favorite, man. I think everyone fell where they needed to fall. Uh, there's a guy in New York who I think will fail. Uh, but that's just, I guess that could be as my disappointed one. But everyone fell where they needed to fall. They fell where I think their fit is best. But I think the best pick out of there was Jamar Chase to Cincinnati. That that was a, an amazing pick. And I know a lot of people were kind of clowning Cincinnati. But when you really look at it, how many times have we said this is a deep tackle class for our team? How many times have we said that? So there's plenty of room, plenty of time to go get yourself some linemen, but there tonight is the night to get elite playmakers. And Jamar is an elite playmaker and him T Higgins. I mean, man, Joe Burrow got some weapons now and he's going to get some linemen tomorrow. So that that one to me, I think was possibly possibly the best pick of the draft in my opinion. Well, um, I'm gonna go exact opposite. I think uh that's my least favorite pick after seeing what Joe Burrow just went through. You know, I, I feel like Panetu, I really feel like he's that good of an offensive tackle. And I know Mikey spoke that there's a deep offensive tackle class so he can get a tackle later. It's a deep wide receiver class as well. He could have got a wide receiver at the top of the second round as far as getting one early in the first. There's still guys like Rondell. Moore. Well, we're going to get to the list of the other people that's still available. Your guy, Terrence Marshall, is one of them. I think he could have matched Joe Burrow up with his other teammate, Terrence Marshall, and that could have been a great fit as well, along with Sue at the top of the first. And I think that would have been a better situation than maybe a combination of Jamar Chase and let's say Dylan Raddins, Dustin's guy. I know uh, that's one of the top tackles that's still available, but like you say, though, to be honest, we, we're nitpicking because all these eight picks were pretty solid picks. It was no reaches. It was nobody that was really out of position that we felt like shouldn't have went within this eight, probably not in the order we exactly picked it, but it all fell somewhere around where we had these guys ranked on our big board. Just like Dustin for a long time was pitching at Jalen Waddle was ahead of Devontae Smith on his board. And he's been saying that for a long time. And I agree with him because of the size difference and the playmaking explosiveness that Jalen Waddle possesses. So I, I'm not mad at any of these picks. I think it was a good idea for Miami to reunite to a tongue of with Jalen Waddle, get him a familiar face in there to help him with the struggles that we've seen him encounter last season. Man, like you guys said, it's hard to pick up best and worst just because the top eight really fell pretty similar to how we would have done it. I mean, there was a few player changes we could have made. But um, to me, I'm going to say the best one, I'm going to go value here. Um, Penny Sewell going seven to the Lions. Um, I think that was great yeah. value. Um, he's a guy that probably, if you take quarterbacks out of the question, is probably the second or third best prospect in the entire draft. So the Lions being able to grab him at seven um, after the Dolphins and Bengals decided to go receiver, um, I think was a great move for them. Um, all day today, it was saying the Lions were interested in trading back. Um, but when you see a guy like Penny Sewell there, I think they just made the right choice in making the pick. It's hard to pick a worse pick. I, I really did like all eight. Um, but I'm going to go Dolphins with Jalen Waddell um, just because I don't see the need 
to have traded up as much like trading back from three to 12, just to trade back up to six to get Jalen Waddle. Um, but I mean, that's also hindsight. Cause it's not like they traded that during draft day. They did that weeks ago. Um, so they didn't know how the board was going to fall yet. And again, this is just nitpicking because I really did like all eight picks. Um, so moving on here to the second set of eight at nine, the Denver Broncos follow the corner pick um, with Patrick Sertan, the second out of Alabama at 10, the Philadelphia Eagles trade up two spots with divisional rival, the Dallas Cowboys, and select Devontae Smith, receiver out of Alabama. At 11, the Chicago Bears go Justin Fields, quarterback, um, and the Bears trading up from pick 20. Um, so sending like two firsts and a third, I believe it was, to be able to come up to this pick. The Dallas Cowboys take linebacker Micah Parsons after trading back from Penn State. At 13, the Los Angeles Chargers end up with Rayshon Slater Jr. out of Northwestern. At 14, the Jets go Elijah Vera Tucker. Um, offensive lineman really can play interior or tackle out of USC. 15, the New England Patriots go Mac Jones, Tom Brady reincarnate everybody. Um, quarterback out of Alabama. And at 16, the Arizona Cardinals go Zaven Collins, linebacker out of Tulsa. And because I'm not ready to hear Michael talk yet, Rashad, how about you go first on this? <laughs> oh, well, we know Michael's foaming from the mouth for uh, other reasons. We already know what's up. But to recap, um, the second eight, I think Patrick Sertain going to Denver is a great fit. I think in Vic Fangio's defense, Denver has a great lineage of corners. You know, you go back to Chris Harris, you go back to Equip to leave, you go back to even Champ Bailey. You know, it seems like they always kept a premier corner uh, in the league. I think it was a great idea for the Eagles to reunite Jalen Hurts. With a familiar face, a man by the name of Devontae Smith. I think this was a pretty solid, as far as everyone expected to go where people were supposed to go, besides the big shocker here in the big story, the Chicago Bears able to trade up and land Justin Fields, I think was an absolute solid deal. They didn't give up too much for him. They gave up a future first and I believe a fourth was, was the deal. And a lot of people was throwing out the fact that the Colts could have moved up and had got Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts, I'm blanking, Justin Fields for that same package. But remember, people, hindsight is 2020. Had we not made that move for Carson Wentz, who's to say things unfolded this way and we could have ended up just left out completely in the dark. And then y'all would have been trying to crucify Chris Ballard for not making a move sooner and putting all his eggs in a basket on draft day. And then something like this not unfolding and we'd be stuck out in the rain. So I, I don't really want to hear the hindsight, you know, what we could have done or we should have waited to see what was going on. With Aaron Rodgers due to the Aaron Rodgers situation that's unfolding today. All of that speculation and who knows if things would have unfolded that same way had we waited. Chris Ballard saw an opportunity to improve the team and get a, what he feel like is a franchise quarterback. And he pulled the trigger for a price that I feel like is a discounted price, especially if Carson Wentz comes in here and looks similar to the way he looked in 2017 or 18. But I like the second half, the second eight, I should say. It, everybody went pretty much where we expected to go. And I'm not making a comment on Zayvon Collins because Michael's going to piss me off. So I'm just going to let Michael talk. Uh, real quick to the last set that we actually had. just want to say this quick thing. Kyle Pitts in Atlanta is just genius. Uh, everyone oh, scores yeah. points nowadays. You got to you gotta keep up. You got to score points, especially with that defense we know that they have. Uh, perfect. J just a perfect nail. Hit, hit the nail on the head. Uh, Justin Fields not going to Den – or Denver not taking Fields was surprising. Uh, but taking Sertan – I just loved the fact I saw nothing but Cowboys fans depressed because they lost out on their two corners. Uh, <laughs> but Justin Fields to Chicago is sneaky good. I'm going to say what Rashad said. It's sneaky good. Uh, I didn't – Justin Fields never should have fell that far. I honestly think he was the second-best quarterback in the draft. He should have went number two. Uh, but going to Chicago, he's got a solid defense behind him. The offensive line, it's – it's um, I guess you could say above average, you know, mm. we don't know what's going to happen with Allen Robinson, but having some okay guys, you know, Cole Komet in, in the building, uh, Matt Nagy, they, they made this to save their job. 
this is Justin Fields is is their last uh, hope. Mac Jones was easily my worst. I just don't understand the the hype about it. But I think I got to go with Justin Fields just because I think he's walking into a I think he's walking into an okay situation. I'm not gonna say it's perfect yet, but the fact that he's got a defense behind him. Uh, I would think he's got an okay system behind him. And I honestly think if he can start day one, I think he's got a great shot at, at uh, offensive rookie of the year. Zayvon Collins, I mean, just athletic all, all, all around the defense. Arizona is clearly trying to buff up the defense and trying to get Kyler Murray some help on the other side of the ball. Having J.J. Watt, Chandler Jones, Buda Baker, and Isaiah Simmons, you need to get him playing more, adding Zayvon Collins who can – come rush off the off the edge and then play be one of those two middle linebackers in that three four defense is it, it's a genius pick uh i don't blame them choosing him over farley because of the injury concerns i honestly thought that's where they would go with farley but zavin collins was also a tremendous pick in my mind So for me, um, my favorite pick you guys didn't actually mention, um, again, it comes to value, and I'm talking about a tackle again here. I love the Rayshon Slater pick to the Chargers. Um, the best part about it is Slater is a guy that because of his a little bit undersized um, physique, um, some people think he should play guard. So it really does give the Chargers the – route to be able to put the best five offensive linemen out there. Um, let them compete in camp, figure out where the best bodies need to go. But Rayshon Slater is a stud um, player wise, skill wise, but also just personality wise. He just has that dog mentality at him. And you love that on the offensive line. Um, I, I told somebody last week, if I have a dream scenario for the Colts, just be able to grab somebody that's unrealistic to come to them. Um, putting Rayshon Slater next to Quentin Nelson to me would have been ridiculous. I, I just think both of their dog mentalities just would have been over the top. Um, and if you were on that left side of the defensive line, you would have been scared to play that duo. It just would have been ridiculous. Um, for me, the second best pick of the round, um, people think I hate Justin Fields for some reason, and that's not the case. I love the fit for Justin Fields with the Bears. Um, I think the Bears made the right decision. Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace um, are on the hot seat. They know they're on the hot seat. So they make the aggressive move. They move up, get a guy in Justin Fields who a few picks is probably going to go to New England. I mean, maybe New England was going to go Mac Jones either way. We don't know that. They're always going to claim that Mac Jones was quarterback one on their board. That's how they're going to roll now. But Going up to get Justin Fields was the right aggressive move um, for Chicago. Um, I don't know who's going to start day one. I don't think Justin Fields is ready to start day one. He has some mechanical issues that I think he needs to work out. He definitely needs to learn how to properly read a defense because NFL defenses, if he struggled against Indiana and Northwestern and they're baiting him, I, NFL defenses are going to eat him alive in that area. But at 12, I mean, you get a guy that's uber talented. The worst picks for me are both linebackers here. Um, I don't like the fit of Micah Parsons to the Cowboys. I don't. Um, I just like, especially at twelve. I just think the Cowboys, Titans, and Steelers are competing for the worst secondary in football. Yeah. Yep. And I understand that maybe you're a little bit nervous about Caleb Farley because of injury issues. Trade back again if like if you need to go. Um, honestly, I don't think Farley or Newsom would have been reaches here. Um, I have them both as top twenty prospects. I mean, when you're at twelve, at twelve to twenty realm, I mean. It's just your best player on your board. Um, I think they may have panicked just because they felt like those corners didn't warrant the 12th pick. I mean, obviously they traded back from 10. And I just wouldn't have taken Micah Parsons. I just don't think he is going to fix that defense. Um, I just don't think getting a middle linebacker, even though they did have middle linebacker problems this last year, is going to fix much. And then the Zayvon Collins fit, man, I just don't see – the same player that Michael sees and that's not a hate on him. I mean, he's one of his guys and I appreciate his love for him. I just, Zayvon Collins to me, I can't in this day and age draft a linebacker that I feel like has to hold up on tackles. And I just feel like he does. I feel like every time he ends up just wrapping them and going to the ground and in the NFL guys are not going to let you tackle him that way. There's just going to be guys that are too elusive and too powerful to be able to run him over that way. And he's going to have to change his tackling mechanics at the next level to be successful. I hope he is. I mean, having a dynamic duo in Collins and Isaiah Simmons would be amazing to watch football wise mm -hmm. and content wise. So I would love to see that. Um, but personally, I'm a, I'm not a believer and we'll see how it all unfolds, but the next set of eight here at 17, the Las Vegas Raiders go Alex Leatherwood tackle Alabama. 
At 18, the Miami Dolphins take Jalen Phillips, edge Miami. At 19, the Washington football team takes Jamin Davis, linebacker Kentucky. At pick 20, the New York Giants take Kadarius Toney, receiver Florida. At 21, your Indianapolis Colts select edge rusher Quiddy Pay out of Michigan. And at 22, the Tennessee Titans select Caleb Farley, corner Virginia. At 23, the Minnesota Vikings take Christian Darisol, tackle Virginia. And at pick 24, the Pittsburgh Steelers take Najee Harris. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go first on this set just so we can get it out of the way. Um, we, like we said earlier, we're going to leave the Colts out until the end. Um, we all love that pick. We're going to talk about it a little bit more later. The picks that I want to highlight, one of them being Tennessee. Um, I think they did make the right decision here, taking the risk, taking Caleb Farley, who had those injury concerns. The dude is talented, man. Um, if he's able to get healthy and be able to stay healthy at the next level, Tennessee got a guy at their biggest need. Um, like I said earlier, them, the Cowboys, the Steelers, competing for the worst secondaries in football next year, and they made a step to be able to improve that. So I think going out and getting Caleb Farley was the right call. I don't think if they would have went um, – if they would have went out and got Newsom, it would not have been a bad pick either if the injury concerns would have been there. I think Farley's talent outweighs it, and that, that was a good pick. And fit-wise, pick 24, the Steelers going Najee Harris. Harris was the best running back in the draft. Um, the Steelers had an obvious need at running back. If you don't draft a running back in this draft, Benny Snell is your every down back, um, and that can't happen in the next, at the next level. So they go out and make the right choice here. The worst pick of this eight, the one that just didn't make sense to me, I'm going to say Kadarius Tony receiver my Florida for the Giants. To me, I had no I had no issues with Tony. I've been very vocal about. It. I think he's a guy that especially when he gets to the middle part of his route um, is one of the best route runners in football. Um, he's just his breaks are beautiful. I just think he's able to win routes that way. Um, so I think he's going to be successful at the next level. But I just don't see the need for the Giants there. Um, I thought the Giants were going to take Quiddy Pay. I really did when they traded there. I thought that was what the name was going to come up. I thought I was going to have to cry real man tears um, <laughs> because the Colts lost Quiddy Pay one pick before. Um, but they took Kodarius Tony, and I just don't see the fit. I think Darius Slayton and him are going to be very similar play styles. And hey, maybe that's just the type of receiver they think Daniel Jones needs. But someone's going to have to line up on the outside opposite of Galladay. Someone has to. And I'm curious to see how they decide to match up and do the depth chart here. Um, but I would not have taken Tony 20. Jamin Davis to Washington was definitely a shocker to me. Uh, going over a uh, joke, going over Nick Bolton, going over those guys. That was, that was definitely a surprise, but you know, I, I, I trust Ron Rivera and his judgment and his scouting. I mean, he did bring in Luke Keekley and, you know, he had a guy like Thomas Davis senior on his team in Carolina. So I think he would know a thing or two about uh, linebackers and there's a certain type he's looking for. So I think that's probably like my favorite one in this area, because I, I always thought that Washington needed to address the defense because when you're going into a division where, you know, Philadelphia wants to add talent on offense, you know, New York got Kenny Galladay bring a Saquon back. You know, they're probably going to target a wide receiver. Dallas, of course, uh, you got to upgrade the defense. And Jamin Davis being an upgrade over Mike Bostic, sneaky good. I think he'll be able to do a lot of things that uh, Ron Rivera would want him to do. And, hey, I mean, I've, I've been vocal about Washington, and that wasn't the pick I, I thought it would be, you know, um, Collins or Merrick or Joke were really the hot names for me at that, but uh, still a good pick nonetheless. But I, I, if I had a least favorite, I don't – I could possibly say – You mean favorite? I think I think you were saying Jamin Davis was your least favorite. No, uh, no, that was my favorite. That was my favorite out, out of this one. Really? Uh, because everyone else was, well, I mean, obviously outside of 21, but. Right, right, uh, right. Yeah, over, I mean. Over, I Farley, I had, over Farley to the to the Titans? Well, Titans, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I mean, look, the Titans needed to get a corner regardless. And, um, yeah, no, I'll stick with Jamin. My worst one is probably 
probably going after uh, Najee Harris, maybe. That that might be it. Or are we even there yet? To uh, Yeah, we do. We do. Are we at Jacksonville? No, we at uh, Pittsburgh. That's the okay, last pick. It, it, it no, uh, yeah, I, th- I think he was trying to find like a worse one than Harris. Yeah. Um, uh, Najee was worse to you than Tony? After all the crap you talked about Tony in this whole draft process, you're not going to go in on him? That's the no. Dude, How about that? Honestly, man, I think guys fell where they needed to, kind of like in the beginning where, where we were talking about. Uh, and, and Tony, I do, you know, you got to – I feel like getting Tony is more about figuring out what the heck you have in Daniel Jones more than trying to see, you know, where does Cardarius Tony fit. I think it's more about we need to figure out who Daniel Jones is for us unless we're going to be the – next New York team to be drafting drafting for another quarterback next year. I believe that's what it's about. So honestly, uh, until we get to that other pick I was about to mention, I don't think I have a, a, a least favorite in this one. I think everyone picked who they were supposed to pick, and they're all pretty solid uh, talents. Yeah, uh, I don't hate any of these picks that's really up here. Uh, I know some people will see the Alex Leatherwood pick as a slight reach, but when you've got rid of three of your starting five offensive linemen, such as uh, Vegas Raiders have done, I think it's important that you get whoever you feel like your guy is. And if that's Leatherwood or Derisaw, which we saw Derisaw go later on in our eight to the Vikings, which is which was a solid pick for them. I didn't I didn't know he had medical conditions that was going on, so that's what caused him to drop because a lot of people expected Derisaw to not even be available when we picked. But Caleb Farley, man. <laughs> Caleb Farley has superstar potential at cornerback, uh, six foot two, four three forty. He's a real explosive athlete. Great ball skills. Ball production was there in college. If it wasn't for the two back surgeries, then we'd be talking about Caleb Farley in a whole different light. He was my cornerback one before I found out about the medical conditions, which caused me to move him back, in which J.C. Horn became my quarter, my cornerback one. Two but, back surgeries, and it's still not at hundred percent. That's crazy. That is that, crazy. That's wild. I mean, the fact that it's still popping up as a concern and he sat out a whole season, not trying to interrupt your thing. Like, No, you're good. You're good. Just, just the thought process of that. Like, he sat out an entire season, ha- tried to get his back figured out, and because of COVID, obviously, um, ends up having to have another procedure, um, most likely because they're not going to say this or throw anybody under the bus. Most likely the first procedure wasn't done well. Um, right. Usually, if you have to have a procedure again on the same area, that's usually the case. Um, and even after the second one, like it's still popping up as a concern and a flag for people. And like, I mean, I've not seen the injury report. I've not seen like what's getting flagged about it. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm speculating here. But the fact that his back is still popping up as flags is is 100 percent concerning. But like you said, the dude's talent is there. And Tennessee had to go corner. Um, I think it's late enough in the round where it's worth the risk personally. Um, But I'll let you keep going there. But I just had to touch on that. Now, and I think it's important that you mention that because a healthy Caleb Farley will probably be the first defensive player I took in his draft. He's that talented. We saw J.C. Horn was that. And that was Caleb Farley before, you know, a lot of these medicals came back the way it it came back. So uh, other than that, Najee Harris, the Najee Harris pick just reminds me kind of, it's like such a Steelers pick, throwback Steelers, the way they used to play, where they used to pound the ball. That just seems like what that pick reminded me of. I can see it. He deserved to be the first running back taken off the board. And remember last year, we didn't see the first running back go until pick 32, which was Clyde edwards Lair in the draft last year. So to see two running backs go this year is kind of, you know, we're getting back to running backs being valued a little bit more than they used to be. All right, here, next set of eight. Um, This is going to be Michael's favorite pick, most likely. At 25, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars taking Travis (laughs) Etienne, running back out of Clemson. At 26, the Browns go Greg Newsom, the second out of Northwestern, the corner. At 27, the Baltimore Ravens go Rashad Bateman, receiver, Minnesota. At 28, the New Orleans Saints take Peyton Turner, defensive end, Houston. At 29, the Green Bay Packers take Eric Stokes, corner Georgia. At 30, the Buffalo Bills take Greg Rousseau, 
edge Miami. At 31, the Baltimore Ravens take Jason away, edge Penn State. And at 32, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers take my boy, my draft guy this whole cycle, Joe Tryon, edge out of Washington. Go get yourself a first-round draft pick, Joe. Um, but hey, I don't care who goes first on this one. Rashad, you want to hit it up? Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, biggest reach of that, I got to go Eric Stokes. I'm just not an Eric Stokes guy. I know he's a, a you know, a 4-2, 40 kind of guy, which there's a whole bunch of 4-2s in these self, self-ran self pro days nowadays. So he's a 4-2, 40 guy, 42-inch vertical, six foot one. The size is great. The tape is not. And I'm a footage guy. I'm sorry. If, it, if you don't have any kind of ball skills on footage, I, you can be there all the time. But you can't teach that. You can't teach ball skills. Like, is it, it's one of those things that you just kind of got to have. And, and he just doesn't show it to me. So I feel like that was a reach. Would have much rather. I would have preferred Asante Samuel Jr. than Eric Stokes. That's me personally. Uh, I wasn't a fan of the Peyton Turner pick. I feel like that was a reach as well. Like you say, Tryon was still on the board at that time when the Saints made that pick. I would have much rather him in that situation. But the Saints desperately needed a number two cornerback and they needed a number two wide receiver. So I, I just didn't see that, especially when you spend such a high draft pick on um, Marcus Davenport, the guy from U- University of Texas, San Antonio, uh, a couple of years back. And you gave up a future first rounder for him. And now you just... I know you lost Hendrickson, but now you're just going to move Peyton Turner ahead of that guy. It's, it's time to see what you have in that guy. It's a contract year for him. So I didn't like that. Jason Owe is a reach to me. But in Baltimore's system, if anybody can get him right, Baltimore can get him right. Baltimore always seems to get the most out of their drafts, especially with their defensive players. So I'm not too mad at it. If you're betting on the traits, then – hey, you got yourself a, a real solid prospect. And with good coaching, he has a lot of upside. So I can see why at that point in the draft you reach. And shout out to uh, Dustin's guy, man, Tryon. He's been he's been an advocate for him back when I thought Tryon was going to be an early, maybe, maybe early, early day two pick. But he managed to find himself into day one. And shout out to him, man. It's a great story. Kid opted out. But... He really has the traits to be something special. I would never tell Dustin that before the draft. I just let him thought I hated him before the whole draft <laughs> process. But now nah, he's a really talented kid, man. And I and I think that's a good fit for him to learn behind JPP and Shaq Barrett out there in Tampa Bay. So, I mean, I think we saw a lot more reaches in this set of eight, obviously. Mm-hmm. It's the late end of the first. And I will say, if you're going to reach on a guy, um, the end of the first is the best time because you get that fifth-year option. Um, So if you are able to hit on some of these risks, like a guy like Jason Oway in Baltimore, who we've talked about so many times on the show is so raw. Um, I don't know if he has a pass rush move to his game yet. Like I really don't. I went through and watched his film and I tried to watch and take tallies of when I felt like he won a rep using a pass rush move. I counted three, (laughs) three total. That's all I saw. I mean, he was a guy that he didn't record a sack um, at Penn state. Um, so it's hard. It really is. It's hard to look at his overall work and say he deserves a first round pick. But if we've said it so many times, the thing that translates to the NFL, the easiest is athletic ability. It, it, it translates. You don't go from being a freak athlete in college to all of a sudden being a below average athlete. That, that those, those traits are going to translate. Um, to me, I'm going to go the worst pick and I'm going to say Eric Stokes to green Bay. Um, the funniest tweet of the night came from some random account. I apologize if you're listening and I'm not giving you credit. I just can't remember who it is at the top of my head. But he said, so Aaron Rodgers comes to the Packers disgruntled asking for a trade. So to try and calm him down, obviously the Packers select a corner. Like I, I, I just don't understand. I mean, today was such an emotional, high energy, high tension day for the Packers and Aaron Rodgers. Elijah Moore is right there for you. Um, if you want to go and get a speedster kind of guy who can win win reps at the line of scrimmage, there's not a guy that does it better in this whole class than Elijah Moore at the line of scrimmage. I think that was a perfect fit for them to go and get at 29. 
or any of these other receivers, just getting him that guy. I mean, he's complained year in and year out of his career with the Packers that he doesn't get these first round targets and they go and take a corner. Like, I, 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 it's just crazy, man. Like, I, I just don't understand the thought process. Um, the other pick to me, um, Russo to the Bills. Um, I'm just really interested to see um, what happens there. I mean, he's a guy that we just talked about how athletic ability translates um, and he doesn't have that. Like he doesn't have that athletic ability to be able to carry his game. Um, Obviously another opt out guy had a great 2019 season, but if you go and watch the tape, a lot of coverage sacks in there. I just feel like his stats may have got padded a little bit. And I think that had to do with his opt out um, knowing he wasn't going to replicate 15 sacks again. Um, I don't think it's easy for even a, super talented prospect to just match 15 sacks again. Um, But he ends up opting out. Um, Best pick in that eight for me. Um, I mean, I've been a big Greg Newsome guy for a while, obviously. Um, So I like that pick for the Browns going and adding another corner opposite award. And I'm not leaving this segment without talking about Joe Tryon, obviously to the bucks. Um, He's just been my guy, this whole process. Um, I saw first round talent on him when I was watching, Um, but because of such a crowded day two edge group, um, I could have saw him sliding out of round one, um, but I was so happy to see his name called. I just think he's such a talented dude. I think he's able – his ability to show in college that he can rush from the standing area and with his hand in the turf I think adds to this element. Um, I think it's a great group for him to learn behind um, and be able to polish those skills that get the fifth-year option. I mean, Tampa, I had no idea what to mock to them. I really didn't. Um, if Joe Tryon's not going to go to the Colts, I'm just glad he was able to get into the first round in any way. Yeah, uh, I guess if I had to say my favorite pick out of that, um, probably Rashad Bateman. Uh, You know, Ravens fans are pretty happy about it. They're talking about a guy who can win 50-50 balls, but Lamar Jackson's still going to find a way to throw it two feet over his head, so (laughs) I'm not not too worried about it. Um, I'm just... After this season, if it still doesn't work out, I don't want to hear Jack. Right. About, I don't want to hear no more excuses about Lamar Jackson. I love the kid. I want him to succeed at the highest level, but it is okay to come to terms about a player that they're just not that great of a thrower of a football. But it's okay because he's still an MVP of the league. He's still the greatest athlete to ever play the position. It's okay. But just say that. I had to get that off my chest, okay? Uh, I had to remind those Ravens fans that I'm not going anywhere on this. The rest, I'm, I'm with all you guys. The rest, I mean, I'm actually not surprised that the tail end, there was a lot of reaches on edge. Uh, I mean, edge position, no matter what talent is there, people are always going to reach because it's the edge position. Uh, Jason Owe to Baltimore was interesting. That actually didn't surprise me. The athleticism uh, just pops off and like, Rashad said Baltimore they're they're a team I mean that's like the perfect fit for him just go in you're gonna stand up you're not gonna put your hand in the ground you're gonna stand up and you're gonna use that athleticism to come off the edge boom perfect all right uh for Greg Newsom man it always feels like Cleveland is drafting quarterbacks or cornerbacks like they can never get that position right like they're drafting every single one every year um but I think that was a solid pick I'm very shocked. I believe I actually had him going somewhere else before that. Uh, it's actually escaping me now, but I really do not get. I do not understand. I think you mocked them to Tennessee, I think. Tennessee, yeah. Um, I do not understand the Travis Etienne pick. I really don't. James Robinson just came in as a, what, undrafted rookie and ran for a 1,000 yards. And Urban Meyer, what the hell are you doing? You're just gonna go get his teammate. That that does nothing. I'm didn't sorry. even didn't even play in all 16 games. Ran, ran over a thousand yards. And here's my thing. And they signed Carlos Hyde. People are probably gonna say, "Oh, it's good for cohesion and everything." Urban, you're already messing up, man. This isn't college. This is the NFL. You're already messing up. Who who takes Travis Etienne over getting your quarterback some protection, some more pass catchers? Who who does that? I mean, you're already you, messing up, Urban. Can you imagine uh, if they would have had Trevor Lawrence and Darius in the same in the same Jesus, first man. round hall, man? 
that would have been that would have been wild. I mean, yeah. you could have went Telvin Jenkins there. Um, I'm not as big of a Samuel Cosby guy, but um, we need to, like he could have been a guy you took there. The thing yeah. is, they were not just the number one pick. I mean, this isn't like the Indianapolis Colts. Um, the year that Peyton Manning gets hurt. They weren't the number one pick because of flukes that hurt and ravaged. Like, this roster is bad. <laughs> this roster has so many holes. To, do, to go running back in an in a area of life where running backs are, just, are becoming less and less valuable, I can understand if you have the need because you need a run game. You do. The quarterbacks, especially if you have a quarterback that has limited abilities at times, like Pittsburgh. I like the Najee Harris pick because you have to get Big Ben a running game if he's going to work anymore. But you just saw Robinson run for over a 1,000 yards, and that roster is going to be worse than this roster. Why take reps away from him? Um, also, this could just be coming because I'm an upset James Robinson fantasy owner right now, um, and that could be clouding some of my statements. But – James Robinson is now on the block from my fantasy teams. If anybody is listening in my leagues, um, he is available. I'll just say it again. They signed Carlos Hyde, too. But that I just don't understand. It. Like, Urban, dude, this isn't college. Stop trying to stack up on running backs. You need one or you need two. You don't need seven. All right? This isn't college, dude. Go get yourself some trenches. Go get you a secondary, which you don't have. Like our urban's already screwing it up. I, I told you he's also I'll apologize to I'll apologize to Urban. Darisol was taken two picks before ETN. I'm just saying in general, around the same the fact around, around the same pick. There's just a lot of guys you could have taken the fifth of a need. But let's go away from some of the negative and we can go into something super positive, guys. Wait, hold on, hold on. I'm not done yet. I'm oh, hey, done I yet. apologize. We're gonna let Michael keep talking. That was such a good segue, too, Dustin. Yeah, it was going to be so good. Michael just doesn't like good things. That's what it is, Rashad. Okay. Actually, oh, okay, N- never mind. Uh, you didn't. Need, you just cut me off, Dustin. So, yeah, I'm trying to beat, man. Rock, oh, man, we're going to get this furniture moving. I know that. Um, <laughs> so, the other thing, Greg Rousseau is so confusing to me. Like, oh, God. You took Rousseau over guys – like Owe and Tryon, and now you got one non-athletic guy paired him with another non-athletic guy in AJ Epinenza, and now where does your edge rush go? It's still probably not going to amount to anything. Jerry Hughes is getting older, and and Jerry Hughes has never really been like an athletic freak either. I mean, it's just yeah. it's just a very no, no, no. below average athletic group at edge now in Buffalo. I mean, yeah. I think they may have panicked a little bit because I mean the reports all day sound like they they were in love with taking ETN. Yeah, um, so they were probably just as shocked about Jacksonville going there as we were when the fit wasn't there. So I mean, they may have had to throw some darts at the board after they missed out on ET in there but so here's my last point (laughs) and Destin I know why you wanted to go first because you wanted to get this off your chest first but dude what the hell is Green Bay doing oh god good night (laughs) (laughs) good night man bro what are you doing you Your generational <laughs> top two quarterback of all time is disgruntled. He wants out, and you go get a cornerback. You don't go get Terrace Marshall, a freak of nature at wide receiver. You don't get Elijah Moore, like Destin said, the best at the line of scrimmage. You what? Like what? You couldn't even get him an offensive lineman. You had to go get a corner. Green Bay, what are you doing? What, man, Green Green Bay lost a lot of respect for me tonight. And I'm going to just say, Houston and Green Bay had some great talents, but they just flushed it down the down the toilet. They do, they do not care about their quarterback. That, that That's my last point. I don't know what the – man, take it away. But um, just wanted to move on to a happier realm of life. I mean, we just heard him uh, going in on Green Bay. But the Indianapolis Colts, I mean, we went through all 32 picks. We saved the best for last for you guys, the reason you've all come. Maybe some of you skipped all the way here, not wanting to listen to the rest of the picks. Who knows? 
But the Indianapolis Colts um, end up staying at 21. Pretty big shocker. But they end up doing it because my number one edge in this class, Quiddy Pay, edge out of Michigan, was on the board. Um, I think Michael was a little bit depressed there at the end of his Packers rant, so I think he needs to pick me up. I'm going to let you go first, Michael. Um, what are your thoughts on getting Quiddy Pay at 21? Pure joy and happiness. That that those are my thoughts. Those are my feelings. Uh, you know, I honestly thought he would be gone off the board by like 18, kind of like after that uh, Dolphins pick. But once I noticed that a lot of prospects were falling, Darisol, Farley, Pay, I saw lots of guys falling. I'm just like, dude, Chris Ballard is gonna have a great draft haul if he tra- trades back. He's gonna get a good haul for this. And then when it got to pick 19, I'm like, okay, well, Washington, of course, they're not going to go quitty pay with Jamin Davis. And then I I was with you. I thought Giants were primed and ready to grab a pay. But once uh, they took Tony, I mean, I think we we talked about it earlier in the week. If pays there, Colts aren't moving. Uh, And Ballard even said it, you know, they had opportunities to trade back, but just where they had pay, how highly regarded regarded they had him as a talent, they couldn't pass him up. And hey, I mean, we've we've been trying to crucify Balor for not being there in free agency. But the thing you gotta look at it, man. Balor's always said he believes in doing it in the draft. He said you gotta go, um, you gotta go in the draft, you gotta add talent. What Quiddy Pay is going to bring to this defense now, when it comes to the pass rush, I mean, he'll play. Uh, I believe he'll pay, play the strong side, so he's not going to take any snaps away from Banigou or Teray here. Uh, so he'll start immediately. I still kind of want to stay away from Justin Houston, still want to get these young guys, Teray and Banigou, going. But Pay helps out day one in the run game. Uh, and just the pure athleticism, the explosion in his hips, his his punches, his just swipes. I mean, everything about him. He was, I think everyone's number one defensive end. And Chris Bauer said, you got to get lucky sometimes. And man, dude, I am excited. I think everyone should be excited. And I'm looking forward to what he does tomorrow. But Quiddy Pay, I, I personally believe is a top two steal or best value pick for the Colts or in this draft. Yeah, I was absolutely shocked, Michael. Like you said, I was absolutely shocked to see him there at 21. I've seen him mocked as early as 11 to the Giants. So when the Giants traded out of that spot and they went back to 20, I said, okay, well, I was thinking Miami may be his floor. But 18, I knew Miami was, they liked him. They liked him a lot from everything I had heard. So I, was ex- I wasn't expecting them to get past Miami. And then when they said Miami drafted the edge, I was nervous. But it turns out to be Jalen Phillips. So I breathed a sigh of relief. Next thing you know, man, the Giants was on the board at 20. My heart was racing. They ended up not going with him. Pick 21 came. I knew Ballard was going to run a car there. I said earlier, I tweeted, it was either Quiddy Pay, Caleb Farley, even though Caleb Farley's not the fit not the ideal fit. He's just that much, that great of a player with superstar potential. It was either Quiddy Pay, Caleb Farley, or trade back. Bottom line. And it ended up being Quiddy Pay. I'm a static man. Great player. Uh, I, I got to get into him with his story. I've seen a lot of people read up on his story or watch the video on his story. Definitely going to do that right before I go to sleep tonight. So I want to get in touch with, with Quiddy, the, Quiddy Pay, the person. But Quiddy Pay, the player, is an absolute stud, man. His footwork is phenomenal. He, he has pass rush moves. He does. He's a bit raw, but he's going to start immediately, be effective in a run game. In the Danica Autry type, type role, he's definitely going to produce in the run game immediately. I think he's going to develop later on as a, as a pass rusher and working with guys like Robin Mathis and Baker is going to get those, it's going to get him to the next level as far as a pass rusher. But the ceiling for him is very high, very, very high. I think the Colts got, like Mike said, a top two steal of the draft. But most of all, Ballard does what he does all the time, and that's capitalized on value. Ballard is a value guy. If he don't feel like you're worth that spot, then he would have got out of that spot. 
We heard in the post the post draft uh, press conference that he said he had trade offers. He could have moved back, but the the spot at twenty one and the player was just too great for him to pass up. So he he did what he felt like he needed to do and get a true difference maker in the draft with Quiddy Pay. Yeah, I mean, like we, me and Rashad were kind of listening to the into the Chris Ballard press conference after round one together, and you could just hear. Um, how much Chris Bauer respects the dude already. Um, I mean, Quiddy Pay said tonight when he was talking to Indy Media that he's probably had about three Zooms with the Indy Brass during this process. Um, there's been a lot of communication. Quiddy Pay was not shocked um, to be coming here. I think it tells you a lot about how much they liked Quiddy Pay. The fact that Ballard, he, he needs you to fit a good amount of criteria to take you in the first round. Um, there's reasons he's traded out of the first round altogether. There's reasons he's traded those picks. I mean, he, he really enjoys day two more. He likes the value there better. He doesn't like reaching. He doesn't, he does not want to reach off where he has people on his board. Um, so I think Quiddy pay, like you just see a big old stamp of approval um, from the, from Ballard and co already being able to take him at 21, not even trading back a few picks, trying to get picks later. Like they did not want to risk, Quiddy pay not being there at anything later. So they, they submit it. Um, and honestly, like they weren't on the clock very long. Um, I, I think they popped up on the screen on the clock. And I think the pick was in before it hit the nine minute mark. Um, like it, it was less than a minute on my screen. They, they knew who they wanted. Quiddy pay to me has the highest floor of any of the edge rushers here. I think he has the best chance of impacting right away. Um, like Rashad said, I think he's going to be able to impact the run game immediately. He just has that strength to him but his athletic ability and his knowledge of pass rush moves I feel like he's going to be able to, to add that pass rush element earlier than we think um, I think we'll be the coaching staff's going to get in there Brian Baker is going to be able to help him a little bit there um, and with how thin the edge group we have in Indy is right now I just think Quiddy Pay is going to be a guy that's going to be able to start day one which is a, which is huge for me when it comes to drafting a guy for in the first round you need day one impact and I think we got that with, with Quiddy Pay um, and I, I'm ecstatic about it. Uh, he was one of about four or five guys I was willing to actually take at 21. Um, and he was option one, a to B. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, Darren soul was there also. So I wonder what kind of conversation was there. I think we'll find out when the next episode of with the next pick comes out. I'm very excited to see how that conversation went down. If there was ever a thought in Ballard's mind to take Darren. So I think, I mean, and Destin, you, you said it right. For Ballard to take you at 21 in the first round is – you're something, man. You're something. And uh, I'm not sure if this was asked tonight, but if it wasn't, why on earth did no one ask Chris Ballard, was Quiddy Pay one of the five or six difference makers you said you had on Friday? Like, why, why was that question – I mean – I'm not sure if y'all listened to the whole thing. I haven't listened to anything. So could y'all tell me if that was a question that um, was asked? That was no, but that was the conclusion that me and Dustin gathered. Remember, we discussed that uh immediately. Yeah. While I was listening. Yeah, we uh we figured that he was definitely in that top six of difference makers that Ballard said throughout the entire draft. When he's speaking about top six, he's not speaking about six pass rushes. Mike is speaking about top six overall. Yep. That's the type of talent they felt like Quiddy Pay was. So, like you said, Michael, the value which Ballard gets out of his picks is, is phenomenal, and, and very few GMs in the NFL can compare to that. And, dude, I mean, everyone is in love with this pick. Mm -hmm. Everyone is in love with this. I mean, I think Bucky Brooks, Skip Bayless is talking about how a great draft pick this is for Indy. I mean, everyone is talking about this, man. I mean, I think, oh, man, I just love the fit. Uh He'll start day one. I don't see Rochelle starting over him, Muhammad maybe, or but I just want to make sure moving forward that even though we do have uh we do have amazing amazing uh value with Quiddy Pay. Man, I can't stress it enough, man. We have got to play to Ray and Banigu. I don't give a damn. What Ture or Banagu is or not doing in practice, man. <laughs> Chris Ballard drafted this dude for a reason, Eberflus. Play the damn man. Like, 
I don't care. I don't. This isn't high school. This isn't participation, man. Play the dude. He's in the NFL. Play him. Like, that is becoming one of the most annoying things. And this is the draft. We're probably not even supposed to be talking about this. This is one of the most annoyingest things I've heard. At first, I was on board, but now I'm just like, dude, this is like something I'll do if I was on a peewee team. Like, hey, man, if you're practicing hard, hey, guys, if you're practicing hard, you get to play. <laughs> like, man, I'm a gr- grown man. I-, I made it here. I got drafted high. Play me. If it doesn't work out, I get traded. I get released. But guess how would you not know? You don't play me. So, I mean, that's that's what I got to say. I don't want this to intervene with Toure or Bandigou's development. Uh, but I love the pick. Quiddy Pay. <laughs> Defensive player of the year. And, and Dustin, let me know who uh, sponsored that 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 rant by Michael. Yeah, I mean, that, that rant by Michael was definitely sponsored um, <laughs> by One Call Technology. Um, One Call Technology is a managed telecom service provider whose senior staff has 100 plus years of experience in virtually every aspect of business communications business phone system installation and services, managed telecom service providers, telecom carrier management, and even high-speed internet. Head on over to One Call's website at www.onecalltech.com or give them a call at 888-585-8850 and tell them the Blue Stable guys sent you. So, so uh, we're we supposed to be talking about day two guys. Let's get excited for day two. Let's take a look into the future. Why don't we? Um, so, I mean, hey, like, I think the biggest thing is there's some really quality guys left on on here. Um, I want to hear three guys that each of us have um, that we just think the value, if they're there at 54, we have to take them. You can't trade back at 54 if these three guys to you are there. Um, I mean, let's let's start with Michael. <laughs> well, you already know where I'm going to go with my first yeah, one. Uh, if Terrace Marshall's on the board at 54, uh, screw everyone else. To hell with them. We're going to go and get the best player available on the board. Uh, make this offense elite. You added another elite talent on your defense. Let's grab another one on the offense. That's number one. Number two, uh, oh, man, this is where it's going to get tough for me. I really like Adebo, but I feel like maybe round three, if we were to get a pick there, that would be the good time to to target him. I feel like that might be a reach on Adebo. Honestly, I feel like if it's Marshall, uh, there was another receiver we mentioned, but I'll I'll, I'll leave that to one of you guys if y'all want to take it. Uh, I don't think he doubles down at at receiver. When it comes to tackles, I mean – I mean, Ballard said it. There's not a lot of prototypical tackles, so I kind of got to change my tune here a little bit. Um, Marshall or trade back, honestly, guys. Honestly, I mean, if there's another guy I'm probably not thinking of right now, uh, safety-wise, I mean, I don't think there will be a need to draft one so early. Um, hey, don't get me wrong. love my guys, Merrigan Washington, but I don't think they're – the kind that Ballard's looking for right now. So honestly, uh, Terrace Marshall. You shouldn't have Joker. Joker. Oh, um, dude from Syracuse. Corner. No. Me- Jeremiah Mel- Owusu. Oh yes, joke man, dude. If he fought, if we get back to back picks <sighs> of Quitty Pay in joke, it is over. <laughs> it is over. It, it's no, I don't want to hear nothing, Tampa Bay. I, I don't want to hear nothing. You suck, you lost. Go ahead and sit down. Go ahead and don't even make a trip to Indy. You, you suck. Okay, joke is better than Antoine Winfield. Okay, I'll take Ben Banigou over Shaq Barrett. He's better. Okay, so wow, it is. It's over. It's over if joke is there. But that is another guy I will say because he is on the board. Uh, other than that, guys. I really kind of – I've always said Ridens is a guy that, you know, I, I, I do think is – I kind of like, but I just can't get over that comment Ballard said. There's not a lot of prototypical tackles. So I'm just like – I think I'm going to rule out tackle uh, for, for day two right now. But those are the only two guys. You're oh, yeah, ruling out tackle? I'm ruling out tackle. Ruling out tackle. Uh, 
Man, Man you're, you're gonna have you're gonna have Colts fans. Obviously. You're gonna have Colts fans with pitchforks in the comments. Oh, God. What are you talking about, me? Chris Ballard's exactly. the one that said it. Oh, um, but yeah, uh, Melatofu, I think that's his name from Syracuse, is another guy I think would be a real good, uh, solid pick at fifty-four. This man just said Melatofu. <laughs> Sound like some you <laughs> never mind. <laughs> but it's whatever. I mean, um. For me, my three, um, I'm definitely not ruling out tackle. Um, I'm not going to do that. No. Um, for me, the three guys that I would say you cannot trade back if they're there. If Telvin Jenkins is there at 54, I think you have to make the pick. Um, I think he just has that nasty dog-like mentality for him to be able to take at 20. Uh, that is a guy that probably should have went in round one. There, there were people that thought he should have been drafted by the Colts at 21. Absolutely. Um, so if he's there at 54, I think you sprint that pick in. I think it just fills your two biggest needs right away with two solid value guys, whether you got them. Um, the second one for me would be, I'll go JOK. I mean, I don't think he's a guy that is a need per se, but I think the talent is too, too great. And Ballard loves linebackers, guys. He just loves them. If, if he's there at 54, the talent, his ability to play so many different spots, can you imagine just letting him drop back and play, be in that box safety for Ballard's three, for Fluce's three safety Scheme, man, stop, like, like, it would stop. just be wild. Hold the presses, hold the presses. Here we go. You know what? No, I, I, I'm not even bringing it up. I'm, go, go ahead. I, I don't know nothing. Go ahead. I, I know exactly what you was about to bring up, but go ahead. That's the finish. Go ahead, finish, finish I, I, I know exactly what he's we'll about. We'll talk to say. about it after the show. Right. We'll continue to have a great show, but I'll talk about it after. So then we'll do JOK at 54. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> the third name, I'll say, if he's there, you just can't trade back. Man, um, I'm so surprised you haven't said someone I'm thinking of, but go ahead. So, I mean, one of the guys I think you're probably thinking of, I'm not going to say because I just don't think he's a Colts fit, but no. I'll say a guy that I really like that I would take at 54, Brevin Jordan, um, tight end. Damn it. At- <laughs> Okay, I thought you were about to say tight, something the same. Uh, tied in, tied in out of Miami. I just think, I mean, he's still my tight end too. I just see a lot of Johnny Smith. I know he didn't test well. Um, I guess I'm just kind of giving him the benefit of the doubt that there was some other uh, other things that kind of caused that. Because when you watch him on tape, he does not look like he is not athletic, like he tested, like just a below a, below average athlete at the position. I just don't see that. I see a lot of Johnny Smith in his game. If he's there at 54, I think he fits a need. And Indy wants to add that dynamic tight end element to the offense. And I think he could fit that role. Um, well, me personally, I'm gonna go with a guy that I'm surprised Dustin didn't say because Dustin don't feel like he's a coach fit, but I'm gonna go with Elijah Moore. I know he's typically smaller than what Barrett likes, but the guy's electric. His footwork at the line of scrimmage, like he spoke in early, is he would immediately go to the NFL and have elite footwork in, in the NFL and his get off at the line of scrimmage. Like you barely can get a hand on a guy. I seen JC Horn move down to the slot and some of the foot and, and he gave JC Horn a business. Like that's the type of get off this guy has at the line of scrimmage, but Elijah Moore, a uh, smaller guy in the T.Y. Hilton mold size wise, I think can fill the T.Y. Hilton role, a guy that we have only under contract for one season. We have injuries with Paris Campbell. You never know what, what to expect from that. We we just have Michael Pittman as far as a reliable option because Zach Pascal is only under contract for one more year as well. So I think Elijah Moore, I can see Terrence Marshall, of course, but I hate to say that because Mike's going to take credit for it, even though we all thought Terrence Marshall was the day two wide receiver. And guess when we were talking about Terrence Marshall? On day two. But anyway... I'm going to go with Brevin Jordan as well. That, that would be my – that's probably the lowest I'll go with Brevin. Like anything lower than that would probably be considered a reach. And, it, and, and 54 of some people may see it as a reach, but I just think his ability and the need for the coach to just line up so well and so perfectly with the coach needing to add it, a playmaker. That can be the playmaker Jim Ursay has been alluding to for the past two months, if you listen to the immediate exit interview right after the season was over, Jim Ursay said we would like to add a playmaker. And he never wavered from that. He said it literally just a month ago that we need to add a dynamic playmaker. And I think Brevin Jordan can be that, such as Elijah Moore, such as Terrence Marshall, those type of guys. And if we're looking for a cornerback, um, 
I'm a Kelvin Joseph guy. I'm a, I'm a lot higher on Kelvin Joseph than a lot of people, but but I I absolutely love his tape. I think he can be extremely productive, even in a such in the zone scheme. I think that would be a great pick. I wouldn't mind seeing it at 54 as well. But who would I be if I don't mention an offensive tackle? Tevin Jenkins, you run in the pick. It's no debate. It's nothing to even talk about. Sam Cosme, that's great value for him at 54. Even Eichenberg, I'm not a big Eichenberg guy. His tape is his tape is his tape, you know. But I've been very against Eichenberg for the Colts. But I mean, at 54, a lot of things change. I mean, like, right. like, like when you're looking at those kind of guys in the second round, I mean, you're just way, it just becomes a way bigger. Now, the biggest thing for us, I think we're all team trade back. We need, we need to find a way to gain some more picks here. I mean, not trading back from 21 creates a little bit of questions here because it just, Bauer's going to trade back somewhere. Because I cannot imagine he's only going to have one day two pick. He loves day two, man. Like this is his, this is his rat. Like this is his favorite day of the draft, and him only having one pick in the second round, I just don't, I just don't see it. Something, something's going to happen tomorrow where here's, the Colts find a way to get that third. Here's another thing that we're not thinking about though. Next year, like you said earlier uh, in free agency, Destiny, he's playing the comp pick game. What if you know? There's also a chance maybe Morocco Brown might become a GM. And we get two third rounders next year. What if he gives some capital next year to move back into day two? Because we assume that he's going to get more picks next year, regardless of whether no trades happen or not. That's also a possibility that can happen. I can't believe I'm saying this, but that's a really good point, Michael. That was, um, that was a, a damn good point. Take take it. I mean, I'll send you that sound clip if you want of me saying that you had the uh, – that was a great idea. I really didn't even think about that. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, yeah. the Colts yeah, definitely my, played the comp game. They played it They played it hard this year. I mean, we didn't want it, but they did. Um, they're they're going to be set up to get a few, uh, it looks like, from some of the exits and not really bringing anybody that really affects – the comp game. I think Isaiah Rochelle's contract ended up being a little bit over the limit, so he will take away one of those picks. But maybe that's the case. If they think Morocco's going to leave, they're going to gain those two thirds later. Maybe you do trade next year's picks. I mean, the only thing that is an issue is you know you already know next year you're not going to have either a second or a first. I can't see Ballard letting seventy five picks go by between him making picks. Pick at fifty four and his next pick at what one twenty seven. I think so. I can't yeah. see it. Can't see it. Just I, can't see it, man. I was pretty certain we were going to trade back from 21. Quiddy Pay ends up being me there. Too. But go ahead and book me down for us not selecting at 54. I just don't see it happening. Oh, no. man. It just, hey, we said the same thing about 21 and look hey, what like, happened. I, mean, I, I know that, that there, there's always a certain guy who, if he's there, they're not going to pass up right. on him. We don't know their board. We know what we would do personally as, as people. Um, maybe they don't like Telvin Jenkins at all. Maybe they look at him and they just don't, don't think he's a fair left tackle. We don't know. We don't know. Um, we, 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 were, we were pretty oh, sure. And, um, I was going to say in the sleeper, uh, the, the, I wouldn't be surprised if they pulled the trigger on somebody like Wyatt Davis as well and thought about moving – you know, maybe Quinn Nelson to, to the tackle position, which I'm not a fan Whoa. of. But, but I wouldn't be surprised. I, I still think Braden Smith's more likely to get moved than Quinn Nelson. I just I just I just think moving Braden Smith over to left tackle because if he's gonna get paid like a top ten tackle, which he might get, he might not. I mean, he doesn't have the accolades to his name, but we know how good Braden Smith's been these last couple of years. Whoa, I just whoa, think whoa. if you're gonna pay him, you might as well move him over. Can't and, pay somebody with 32 inch arms. Little tackle money. That's what they say. <laughs> that is what that is what they say. That is that is what they say. But I mean, he's he's been successful switching out to tackle. So I'm just saying, if I had to move one of them, yeah, I'd move sure. Braden Smith. Um, I do think we'll see a guard taken by the Colts. Maybe day three. I don't know if it'll be day two. I mean, but they're going to go best available. They're never going to panic. They're not going to take a tackle just to take a tackle. I mean, Bowers preached that. He's pounded the table on it. He said it about the edge rusher, and then they took Quiddy Pay again because they think he's that special. Um, but hey, we're super excited for day two tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern. Tune in for the day two of the NFL draft. Second and third rounds are tomorrow. Uh, make sure you're checking out the bluestable.com. Um, by the morning, we will have the 
Quiddy Pay reaction article up. We'll have draft grades for the whole first round up. Just make sure you're giving credit to our writers, man. We're so thankful for all the work they do. Um, grinding. They're just out there grinding these content for us, guys, and we're so excited that they're able to give that out to you guys. But, I mean, this has been the Blue Stable, um, the official Colts podcast of Fan Sided. Do you guys have anything else to say? Thank the people, man. Pop for the people. Go Colts. Quiddy Pay is here. We rule the world. Terrace Marshall season. Hey. <laughs>